Hey y'all. Oh, that's really rude. That's really rude. Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a long time since I've uploaded a video. I know, don't get on me in the comments saying that I don't upload. I've just been at work, my shift changed, so I'm not able to hop on my phone and upload to YouTube as much as possible like I was able to before. But all that's gonna change now, I finally, I'm in the rhythm of my schedule, so I know when I can upload, when I can make a video, so be ready. I'm coming back. I'm gonna make a comeback, okay? Okay. If you are new here, right, and you haven't subscribed to my channel, the button is down below. Please make sure you do that. Like the video. Go look at some old videos that I posted, like those two. Comment, hey, anything is good. You know, if you want feedback, what you want, all that. I'm good at responding, I think, most of the time. So, if you have a question, just shoot it down in the comments and I'll answer it. So, if you haven't noticed yet, shave my head I'm going to get into why I, I did it later on in the video once we really get started but this is really just an update on my life how I've been doing in Korea and yeah I just want to share a little bit you know get a little personal with you guys um, I want to actually start a new hair growth journey this will be the last time I'm praying that I cut my hair knock on wood but <laughs> about my hair I cut my hair two weeks ago, not two weeks, damn. I cut my hair first uh, two years ago because I was transitioning from uh, relaxed hair to natural hair, and that was back in like 2018. Um, January to be exact, January 2018, so the new year. Um, everything was going pretty well, going pretty fine for me at least. Um, I was happy with my new hair texture, you know, it was very thick, coarse, and I was totally in love with it. And as it grew out, I started to see my real hair texture. It started to lose that kinky, coily look and started to get more and more to that 4B, 4C type of, you know, mixture. And I was like ecstatic, like I just loved how it was growing out, but um, made the mistake of bleaching my hair and that's where the story falls uh, throughout the next two years of my life so I never dyed my hair before um, never went to a professional I did it at home with my cousin and I thought it was gonna be great um, it came out great at first um, the color was beautiful I loved it, it was like a honey blonde because I didn't leave the bleach in for that long um, it was fine it was perfect I loved it but as my hair grew out, I started to notice that it was breaking off at the end. And I didn't think of it that much. Like, okay, well, you know, if I keep moisturizing my hair, it'll be fine. Like, um, I don't have to worry about it. It'll just repair itself. So I kept living my life for the next two years, thinking that my hair will recover if I don't cut it. And I just let it grow. And at one point when it grows out, I'll just cut off all the dead ends, but hair doesn't work that way. Um, you need to get trims, you need to clip your ends in order for your hair to grow because the longer you keep those dead ends in and those split ends on, the further the split ends will travel up the root. And I didn't notice that. Um, another problem that I had with my natural hair previously is that I did a lot of slick backs. Um, this was before I joined the military as well. And if you know, slickbacks can be a very, very tricky trade. Um, always putting the brush on your head at one certain spot, you know, parting your hair always on one certain side of your head and just brushing it and pulling it can tear, the, tear and rip the hair out. So as I had split ends traveling up the root of my head, I also had breakage at the top of my head because I would brush and brush and brush. So I lost a lot of hair. Um, of course, you know, I was brand new to the Naturalista gang, so I didn't know good moisturizers and I didn't know protective styles. And you know, now as I got older, I figured out and realized that, okay, I need to trim my ends and I need to do these twist outs and protective styles so that my hair can flourish and grow. But uh, back then, I didn't know any of that. My go-to hair products was Eco Styling Gel, 
got to be blasting gel and got to be the invisible glue. A lot of glues and a lot of gels can rip your hair out too. I didn't care. I just wanted my hair to look nice, slick back, sleek, you know. I wanted to switch from slick to curly and have that ability to do that. But when your hair is damaged, you know, it can permanently stay a certain way. Um, that I'll get into later on how my hair started to conform on one side versus the other side. Um, when I joined basic training uh, back in 2018, 2019, my hair went through the trials and tribulations of what the fuck. <laughs> the shower water one was hard as fuck. So that's taking like all the moisture out of my head, like beating my hair down. You don't have a lot of time to actually detangle your hair and do your hair in basic training because basic training is like tempo, like let's go. You need to get it done ASAP. So I didn't really have time to take care of my hair. Um, I did more constant slick backs. You have to do that. That's a part of the, you know, AFI for women. At least keep your hair, you know, tied back, looking nice and neat. Didn't have time to do protective styles because we were allowed to do that as well. We just didn't have time to. So... I witnessed more breakage and more damage to my hair, especially to the nape areas of my head. And this was even before basic training when I started noticing when I did my slick backs, I would have pains in the back of my neck and the nape area of my head. And in basic training, whenever I wash my hair, I'd lose clumps and clumps and strands of hair like in the back of my head constantly. So after I graduated and as the weeks went on, I noticed that I had bald spots all back here in the back of my head while the rest of my hair was longer than the back. So I couldn't pull my hair up into top buns anymore because the bald spots would be noticeable. Like it's there. Like I took pictures of it. Um, they were terrible. They were bad. Like you can actually see the skin of my scalp. That's how bad it was. And I would always have these raised bumps in the back of my head. And they were always red and itchy and they hurt. So um, once I got to tech school, once I graduated BMT, um, I was still doing slick backs. I didn't learn my lesson, but I was trying to limit how much I did them. Try to do a little bit more protective styles as I became a little bit more smarter on how to do them. And um, it was working for a bit, but I went back to my old ways because doing protective styles takes so long. And you know, once you're in training, you know, trying to go to school, trying to learn your job, it's just very hard to, you know, get your personal life and your military life in bound, like, you know, in sync. So, I went back to slick backs because it's the easiest thing to do, simple, and my hair was just falling out more and more every day, every day. Like every time I washed my hair, I would have clumps of hair falling out of my head and shower still. Switched up my shampoos thinking, you know, it'll help moisturize my hair because my hair was super dry as well. That didn't work. So I just gave up on my hair, kept slicking it back and kept telling myself one of these days I'm just gonna cut it off. I'm just gonna cut it off. I'm just gonna cut it off. Didn't do that <laughs> as quickly as I wanted to because I was scared, you know. I had already cut my hair before and I just did not want to go back to cutting it all off again and starting over, you know, going through the awkward phase. I just didn't want to do that, but something in me just desperately wanted to let go of the deadness on my hair because my hair was dead and I felt like it was weighing me down more and more every day I would just wake up and hate my hair you know I went from completely loving it to hating it this is like after I graduated tech school you know I'm on my way to Korea I'm talking to my boyfriend about you know I think I want to cut my hair you know when I get there or when I get back to the states I want a professional to cut my hair I just want a new style I want it all gone and I noticed that the longer I waited the more it was going to follow anyway I went a couple months in Korea with slick backs in my head still. Tried to implement a little bit more protective styles in my hair. So sometimes I, go, I would go to work with twist outs for a week. Um, and that actually, once I started like switching up my products, it actually helped my hair in the middle 
grow a lot faster. And the curl texture was very different from when I cut it the first time. It was actually a coil, like a loose coil texture. Not completely 4C and not completely 4B. I would say like in the middle. And um, I was like, wow, like maybe this is a sign that my hair is finally flourishing. You know, I switched my products. I switched from um, the OGX blend, the, blah, the OGX brand to whole blends. Cause I've seen a lot of like naturalistas use whole blends and amazing, 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 amazing shampoo, conditioner, and moisturizing custard. Those three is like the holy grail right there. That's all you need. And um, I thought, you know, I thought it was working out for the better, but it wasn't because I noticed that one side of my head wouldn't curl anymore like it used to when I first cut my hair. And that's just been an ongoing thing that I've been noticing about my hair texture because one side of my head will be beautiful like 4B, 4C curls and the other side of my head wouldn't even curl at all. It was like very frizzy, straight curls. Not even curls, like very frizzy, straight waves, if you want to say. So um, I was talking to my friend and she said, you know, you could possibly get that from sleeping on one side of your head so much because the more you put tension and pressure on your head, the more those bonds start to break down and conform to how you're uh, putting pressure on it. And, um, stuff like that. So I took it into consideration, like, oh, you know, maybe that is what it is. And once I thought my hair was getting better, it wasn't, it was still damaged. The ends were still bleached and brittle. Um, my hair was still dry, you know, and I took it upon myself to say, you know what, I can't, keep living my life thinking that I have hair when I really don't. And I prefer to have healthy hair over length. And that was something I always struggled with when I was a kid because uh, when I got my first relaxer, you know, as a black girl in America, you want to fit in as much as possible. So when I traded my natural hair, my beautiful texture, my given hair for something that looks like someone else's that's not even me, you know. I had to pay the you know, I had to pay the price for that. And I did. Ultimately I paid the price of having to struggle with my hair, trying to help it grow and flourish. So um on the twenty sixth, I believe, the twenty fourth, that's when I said, you know, enough is enough and I took the razor and I shaved my head and it was like completely bald I mean like you can see the scalp not anymore because it's actually growing out really fast I already got a little bit of stubble a little bit of a little bit of something something going on y'all don't do me you know my hair growing my hair's growing but <laughs> once I finally said you know enough snuff and I shaved my head <sighs> I, sh I first I started off with the side of the head that actually is curly and I saw the curls fall to the ground and onto my sink and I just looked at them like wow like I'm really doing this like there's no going back now because I got a fat ass bald spot right here in the middle of my head so it's just like I can't pull my hair over that like that's it's not gonna work like that I feel lighter I feel like a weight is being lifted off my shoulder and that encouraged me to keep going so I'm just taking it shaving it shaving it shaving it and when i'm done when i was finished i looked at myself in the mirror and i'm like wow like this shit is real like i actually did this shit like damn so that leads me to now i'm bald and i'm i'm absolutely fascinated with how my hair feels as it's coming in like the stubble just feels like velvet across my hands um the products I use now, because I still use products, don't think because you have a shaved head, you don't need to wash your hair because you don't have any. Wash your scalp and massage it and moisturize it. That promotes hair growth, y'all. You have to stimulate the scalp, stimulate the pores, help that blood flow so that your hair can ultimately grow. Just because you ain't got none don't mean you don't do it, okay? You have to help it grow. You have to. It's like a plant, y'all. You gotta water the plant even when there's no plant there. You got the seedling. Your scalp is the seedling. Water, 
moisturize your seedling, y'all. Help it grow, help it grow. So the products I use still, you know, whole blends, still use the shampoo, still use the conditioner, still use the custard on my head. Same way I would do it when I had hair, just, you know, shampoo it thoroughly. This time I can actually like get into the scalp with the conditioner and the shampoo and the uh, custard and just really work it in because I have no hair to just, like, you know, fight against. And I just really massage it and get it all in there. Uh, when I get out the shower, I do not use any oils. I don't use any uh, like moisturizers. I'm taking it back to when my mama used to do my hair and the only product she would use in my hair was a grease. And it was either Sulfur 8 or Blue Magic. So I went with Blue Magic because it's bigger and it's cheaper. And y'all, mind you, I cut my hair like three days ago prior to making this video. It's already growing back as stubble. Like, it's, you can't see it, but it's a lot of stubble on my head right now. You can actually see the black outline of where my hair is actually growing at. So I'm like, you know, the less products you put in your hair, the less you're clogging up your pores. Because the more products you add to your hair on top and, you know, layer it on, the more your pores get clogged and the more that stops, it stops your hair from growing really because you can't, it, it has no room to just shoot out when it's clogged with moisturizers. It's just like when you get pimples on your face and stuff, you know, it's, your pores are clogged. It's the same thing with your scalp too. So I, I try to use, you know, one product on my, you know, on my hair to help it grow and a very very light product just some grease will get me through it and it's really been you know it's really proved to me that you don't need to get the latest and greatest shea moisture or the cantu cantu is terrible for your hair if you're still using cantu please stop it um it's terrible for your hair for my hair i'm not even gonna say that's right it's kind of bad you don't need to use the latest and the greatest hair product ever just to get your hair to grow you know what did your mom use in your hair when you was younger nine times out of ten she used peak moisture sulfur eight blue magic and maybe that little black gel i forgot the name of it maybe i don't know but you know that was the go-to hair stuff because it worked but um that's my hair crap my story as to why i cut it off so korea here's the other side of my life um i'm doing well i'm living i'm alive obviously um work is I'm trying to manage it it's very stressful but at the end of the day i'm gonna get through it nothing will stop me um my relationship is amazing love him more than ever uh, it was about to hit a year in April. My birthday, April 17th. Y'all look out. Look out for my birthday. Um, but yeah, so um, there's not really much to update on my uh, personal life, really. I just wanted you guys to hear and see my side of the story as to why I cut my hair off. And uh, that's really all I had. I missed you guys. I really did. Uh, I really want to thank you all for those who still are subscribing to my channel and getting my views up. Like I, am, I really appreciate you guys. Like you guys are so amazing, and you take the time out of your day to watch me. So it's just like wow. Like you know, damn, thank you. Like thank you so much. Like you deserve like a you know a round of fucking applause because shit, thanks. But um, yeah, so. Uh, think i'm gonna end this video here i hope you guys enjoyed the video like i said in the um in the beginning if you haven't subscribed to my channel you best to do it at the end of this video make sure you like leave a comment and you know enjoy your day you know live a little go outside have some fun do something chill hey all right i'm gonna go bye <laughs>